What's up folks, Brandon Picasso here. Today I'm gonna to be buttoning up this 2020 CBR 650R. Last time out, I got the bike on the street for the very first time. It was a little sketchy in the wet weather, but I learned a lot and now it's time to get these fairings on. So hopefully I can get this bike inspected and then get it on the street fully and legal. Let's get to it. eBay special, baby. We got new fairings. <laughs> Plan is to start in the rear and work my way to the front. Because the front is when it gets kind of annoying, so that is the front piece. And this is my windshield. It did not give me my tenant one, so I'm kind of bummed about that. The outer fairings make sense, but the inner pieces, the little pieces that mount the fairing to the bike, this stuff gets kind of confusing really quick, but I do have all the older body parts, but yeah, it's just, just a little bit confusing. I know what you're thinking. Brandon, what is the quality of these parts since you got them from eBay? Yeah, I got the eBay special. Um, eh, it's okay. You kind of get what you pay for. The clear coat runs in a few places, but overall the finish looks okay. Like this piece, for instance, look at that. You see the chip on the stripe right there, but that is actually under the clear coat, so you can't actually fix that. However, the part actually does match the paint pretty well, okay? Unlike the part in the back. Huge difference, right? So while these parts have a little bit of a finish issue, but like I said, the clear coat looks okay. You see a little bit of orange peel right there. The color matches and honestly that's most important to me and the fitment first order of business I need to take this off because i got the key that works now oh may require two hands we are free yeah, that's just this thing gets a little tight in there so get this off seat nothing to it it's two allen keys all right, now we got access to the little mounting spots that we need in here. Also, I'm gonna give a huge shout out to myself because I made this. I took the one that was on here that was all busted up, re-engineered it, made it to fit for my own use case, and now I have a license plate bracket with an illegal nameplate. Yeah, I love this. I had to loosen up the license plate bracket just so I can get these little tabs in here. So they have to go over like that both sides this piece is supposed to fit some way like this it goes okay so i had to go get one of the originals because <laughs> i've been out here for about 10 minutes trying to understand how this thing goes on here and also i realized that i'm gonna have to put the plastics or the inner plastics on the painted pieces first because these screws are internal so or they're facing towards the inside of the bike so i can't do that once the fairing is on so lesson learned there yeah this is confusing okay all right this makes sense now boy i was confused man i was like what the f i was like i was looking at the hole up under here and i was like where the heck is the key gonna go on the other side i was like how are you gonna access that but I see now. I'm glad I still have these because obviously I need these screws. But yeah, it just it gives me a reference point on how to put this stuff back on. The whole time I thought this part was this part. These two parts ain't even the same parts. Of this stuff looks so alike, man. Oh my goodness. Now I got the right piece. Nope, that's still not the right piece. This is the right piece. Now, here. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, so what's going on now? These uh, screw holes are not cooperating. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole that will allow me to screw these in a little bit easier. That looks close enough. Can't go too far, because if I go too far, I come out on the other side. Taking me 
like in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, just install one freaking piece of fairing. Cause I've never done it. But, oh wait, it doesn't have to hook in down there. Give me my little room for me. Ah, there we go. That sounded right. And now, oh, you would not be the right freaking, look at this is some, I'm gonna have to drill that out. That's some, what the f it's not. Let me show y'all this, man. So I finally got this to snap in, but this piece is supposed to snap in over this little notch, just like on the other side. But it seems that the hole in the piece of fairing kit is not big enough. So I may have to take this out, drill it just slightly because it's not hooking. One thing y'all don't have to worry about me um, doing is not being real with y'all, man. This is literally how this stuff goes sometimes. <laughs> no fakeness, all struggle, man. Looks like it's so dang close. Honestly, it probably doesn't matter. I've spent enough time on this. So I've um, made the executive decision to move on. There's two major bolts holding this thing on there so it ain't like it's just gonna come flying off i'll deal with the consequences later we're gonna move on i think that part's gonna be fine it's just a matter of uh certain stuff just not lining up and this is kind of the risk you take with aftermarket stuff sometimes especially fairings i think we're gonna be fine okay but neither of these wanted to clip in like they're supposed to you're not gonna worry about that though. Irritation. Besides the mild irritation I've had with this stuff, it actually has gone back fairly easy. Okay, that's one. There we go. Luckily, these went in pretty simple. This one was a little stubborn to get started, like it was like cross-threading, but it, it just needed to be turned. Got access to the keyhole, that's bolted in, gotta go under now. Yeah, making progress. Two bolts under here. I'm just gonna bridge this stuff in. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man, I almost gave up on every end, man. But luckily we got it. I'm cleaning up this because we're gonna go ahead and put these side pieces on, but the rear end is done. Guess I gotta put the cover back on, the seat, and get these side panels on. I think the way this is supposed to work, there's a hook on this end, so pretty sure it hooks into this piece and it pivots down. Yep, just like that. And that piece goes in. I was kind of curious about this because the stock pieces have Velcro on them. Yeah, I might go back with my stock pieces. I don't know if I like that too much. All right, so going off that Velcro theory, this is the stock piece and this is the aftermarket piece. The pieces look pretty close. When we flip them over, Velcro, Velcro, um, uh, Velcro. So, well, maybe not Velcro, something sticky that works very similar to Velcro. So I think I'm gonna go back to the stock piece. This piece actually looks fine. Just a little dirty. And um, it's, cause what's gonna happen when the wind catches this, it's gonna flat. It's gonna make a noise. It's probably gonna slap against the tank or something and it may even come off. So I'm just gonna do it the right way. Yeah, see, I like that. See, that play is not there. That was the better move. Now we bolt it in. We're good to go. Let's need to do the other side. Yep, that is Mwah. beautiful, man. Love it when it works out. All right. That took a lot longer than it was supposed to, man. 
colors off, but I'm happy. Still don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I think I'm a, I got a, I got an idea, but let's uh, let's move forward. So coming back here, this brake light, it's got this play in it, and I know when you hit a bump, it's gonna rattle. I think I may be able to 3D print a shim and just kind of wedge it in there. And I think we'll be fine with that, but I'm not gonna deal with that today. I'm gonna go ahead and deal with this tank. Yeah. <laughs> they freaking gave me hardware, man. Well, that's embarrassing. Now we in it now. On another episode of You Get What You Pay For, not OEM, OEM. OEM has the genuine Honda stamp. This one doesn't. I plan on putting this back on the bike. There is a scuff there. There's a scuff there. But honestly, having that, that, I mean, the piece just looks better, right? Now, this one's shinier. It's not even like level as it's sitting on the table. But any of the parts on this CBR that I don't use, I'll just put them on the shelf in case I get another CBR to do the same thing, which is more likely what I'll do. Because once you start work, working on these bikes, it's just easier to get more of them from the lot and then just do the same thing, if, especially if you got spare parts, it saves money. But yeah, it'll get used at some point, or I just sell them. But come to think of it, I completely forgot about this tip. So looking on the back, you don't see anything. Looking on the back of here, you have those little Velcro pieces. Yep, we're gonna use this. This is the ignition cover, key ignition cover. And it goes under like this. Kinda have to jam it down makes this little seal and take these push pins one in there the other goes in yeah. all right and for the main event push those little things down so that ain't moving that those little holes like that I think it's supposed to ignition cable spin that's weird let's see what this fender looks like uh oh my wife just got home which means my working the bikes is coming to an end does it have ABS on the side? Probably not. Nope. It's not. But it is definitely pretty. The other one was cracked, so this one's gonna be a nice replacement. All right, hopefully this thing is not fighting me as bad as the first one did, because I wanted to, boy, I wanted to punch that thing. Because you have to kind of squeeze these to kind of get them in here. Oh, let me go under, actually. It's honestly terrifying to do this. I'm gonna break it. Yeah, so working on cruisers has gotten me a little spoiled. I don't have to take the front wheel off just to put a front fender on. I don't want to do that with the CBR, so I'm gonna kind of finagle it. I'm gonna finagle I'm gonna finagle this a little bit and see if I can make this work. I don't want to take this front wheel off. <laughs> We're gonna see what we can do. Clear coat on there is godly, boy. Whatever clear coat they're using on there, boy, I I, I hang off a cliff with that stuff because it didn't scratch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it did. It scratched a little bit on one side, but it'll be covered up. I told you, I'm I'm not taking this front wheel off. No, I'm just, nah, bro. I was more so worried about it breaking than um, the, uh, the clear coat. I ain't, mm, I ain't doing all that. I said what I said. And also, the one spot that was scratched up was right there. And that's gonna be covered up by that. So you're not even gonna see it. Good job. Got a lot of work done. Well, I'm gonna go get some food and I'm gonna call it a night. So I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow. Yeah.
putting together sport bike fairings again i'm spoiled by cruisers okay i did not think this would be this in depth i thought it was just hey you put the fairing on the bike but no there's plastic internal pieces or inner pieces that hold the fairings to the bike and i'm trying to figure out how to put these inner pieces onto the fairing to mount it to the bike so when i took the fairings off the first time it was just pulling them off as one piece and now that i'm trying to put the new fairings together it all kind of just came as separate things in a bag of screws with no instructions so today i'm kind of like trying to piece together the plastic inner pieces to the fairings and all the little screws that come together because you can't just put the plastic inner pieces on the bike because you have no way of screwing the inner pieces to the fairing because they screw from the inside out. Yeah. So this is one of the parts that I was kind of going over. This is the broken, uh, what is this? The left side of the bike, yes, yeah, CBR reading from the left. I need to get the signal light out of here, but this is one of the pieces that I have um, new. All these inner pieces I have new of actually. And what I need to do before I even put the, the this piece on, I need to mount all of these individual pieces to it. But I really don't need these because I have new hardware now that I realize it. But I need to get the air duct off because I don't have a new air duct, and I need to get the signal light out. I guess I can start by just pulling these little pins up. Just push pin, push tabs. Um, oh. All right, there's a screw in there holding the signal light. So now, bro, this is wild, man. I did not think this is, I, I really did not think this is gonna be this in, in, involved, man. I truly did not. That is free. I need to get this off. This is my air duct. Okay, and then there's one. Oh my goodness, this is involved. So we got that part done, we got the air duct back in there, back in there. And I think there's a bottom piece I need to put on, but yeah, this is not straightforward. But luckily, now that I did this one, the other one should be pretty easy because I know kind of how this how this piece goes together now. All right, I seriously did not expect it to take me this long to do these fairings. This is honestly kind of difficult because I I don't really know how this stuff is put together. Anyway, you don't really care about that. I got the fairings put back together, sort of. I'm gonna have to kind of pull them apart to run the signal lights and also to connect the headlight pieces to the side fairings. 
But anyway, I went back and looked at some of my video, realized I'm gonna have to do part of the headlight first before I put the side panels on. It'll just be easier that way. We're making progress. Clip this, honestly, at this point. I don't even care about the zip tie. I just wanna be done with this. And I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this to the new one that I have. And the only reason I'm transferring it is because I have a new one and uh, this one's actually, I think, damaged somewhere on here. Yeah, it's damaged right there. I would have plastic welded this back together normally, but since I got a new one, I was going to convert it. Okay, there's my screen. So that slots into there. This is the front piece that channels the air through the air duct. I think it slots in these like this on both sides. I think this is how this goes. I'm about to find out. So that's gonna go in there. Small winds, man. So this clips into here. Wasn't planning on putting this on this early, but the cool part is, is, is getting more of these parts off of my flow. There we go. That sounded right. Okay, so that piece had to come back off because I realized I won't be able to get these in there to get the front piece on. Man, I tell you, pull that part off, that, that freaking hurt. This is one of those days, man. Um, I don't know how the heck I'm gonna mount this this uh, screen because none of these parts that they gave me have a way to screw. Like, I can put screws through this, but there's nothing to connect these two together to tighten them down. I I, I don't know. I'll figure that part out later. This is I ain't a lot, man. This this is irritating. I do not like doing this. I do not like sport bike fairings. After cleaning my somewhat of a deep wound on my finger, just a little irritated. Um, let's see, we're gonna get this thing mounted, I think. Hooray, we're doing more work because I have to take stuff back off. But we're gonna see if. Uh, Goes like this. This thing is throwing me for a freaking loop right now. And I don't like it. <laughs> this is one of the most finicky bikes ever because there's so many little components. Ow, Jesus, bro. My hands are taking a beating today. There's definitely some trial and error that you have to go through with some of this stuff, man. Like I said, the fairing pieces, for instance, it came with no directions. <laughs> so you're kind of having to piece together a lot of this stuff. And each one of these screws that came with the new fairings, they don't match any of the older stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I just kind of have to figure it out as I go. We got these four on top, but before I even get to that, I want to put this back in its place, but it looks like I'm gonna have to disconnect this because Spacing in here is just super freaking tight. And let's see if I can get that like that. Ooh, get that like that. I think I can go back in there like this now. This is really tight, man. So, okay, now that that's in there. That has to go under. I just know that I'm gonna have to take something back off. I know it's coming. I'm putting this lower piece back on. I realize these don't even go here. They actually go here and the mirrors go here. Um, I still don't know how the heck you're gonna mount the windshield, but you know, I'll conquer that when I get to it. I've dropped this screw two times now, 
Some of this is coming back to me, man. This is this is some this is some trial and error stuff, bro. I uh, this is where the heck, man? What a screw go, bro? Oh, there he is. Like, dang. But no, like, this is some serious trial and error stuff, man. It is not for the freaking faint of heart. It is. It is very irritating. When you're putting stuff together, you have to take stuff off. Stuff isn't lining up correctly. I almost uh, said off camera, man, I wish I was building an engine right now. Because this right here, see like this clip, for instance, man. This clip is pissing me off. This clip has been a freaking horror right now. Because <laughs> it would not stay in place. These clips are so cheap that they give you. They don't stay in place. And... It's just like when you try to put the freaking screw in, the clip is sliding off and you're over here struggling to get it on, I'm trying to race to get it and you drop it and then you just, you have to repeat the process. All right, that was uh, pretty irritating. Before I absolutely lose my freaking mind and push this bike over, because <laughs> this thing's gonna drive me nuts. I'm going to try to get one of these sides mounted. Um, let's go something. Got the air duct right here. Yeah, I end up taking the fairing off of the duct. I could not find a easy way of trying to mount this thing and having the fairing on because you have to run the signal wire through here. This wire right here, you have to run this through here, like that, zip tie that there, and screw through here to here. It, I was, mm -mm. no, I'm just not gonna deal with that, man. I'll tell you what, fairings are not my friend. I, I don't like them. Um, and now I'm trying to figure out how this thing goes. You still have to jam the air intake in the correct orientation so it can kind of do its thing so there's just there's just not a lot of space to work with without doing it this way and so I struggle yeah and there we go now it's in place and now it's a matter of getting well that's in place but the, the holes fully there we go. I think this goes under this. Yeah. There we go. And from there, we got my zip tie here for this. Honestly, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and do this. All right. So all of this looks good. That's where it needs to be. That's where it needs to be. We've got the screw hole up here. The duct is where it needs to be. And now we just need to get the panel and actually put it on here. Everything is kind of where it needs to be. I'm gonna leave that zip tie alone for now. I'm gonna clip it. I think I need a bushing for that actually. So you think that I will be making some good progress, got through the issues of these fairings, was starting to kind of look over the hill. No, I had to take all of this stuff back off because I found out that the headlight bracket was bent and the headlight itself, one of the mounts on it was cracked. So I had to take all of this back off and try to figure out how I was gonna fix this problem. I was beyond frustrated. Looking at the forks, the wheel, Everything there is straight, but this bracket right here that holds the headlight, it is not straight. And because of that, even when I put everything on here, the windshield is going to be shooting at an angle. The headlights are shooting at an angle. So really this bracket, either I bend it back in place or I buy a new one. So of course I'm going to try to bend it back in place. Yeah, this is a, uh, I think this is steel. So it's going to be a little challenging. I'm thinking about just buying another one, man. 
Oh, man. Not by hand. Oh, big dumb hammer went too far. Now it's the other way. <laughs> it's close. I think uh, it wouldn't hurt from like maybe five more millimeters to the left. Okay, so that kind of worked. What I don't know though is do I need to go up with it? Cause it was kind of just like twisted. Um, but the propane with the hammer, it does work. But like I said, I don't really know if I need to go up or back with it at all, but I'm gonna start putting the stuff on and see how it goes. And if I have to make another correction, I'll make another correction. almost 12 hours i finally got a win at the end this is the reality of rebuilding wreck stuff it does not always go together easy the fairings would not go on like they're supposed to because i had a fundamental issue with the headlight bracket i knew that was kind of an issue in the beginning but i thought i could work around it but it got worse these fairings have little clips and little brackets that slot into each other and if something's off somewhere it's going to throw all of it off. So I had to fix it. We bent it back in place. I think I got it around 94%, but I could not go ending this night without fixing some of this stuff. And I finally got this right panel on. It looks good. Everything seems to be working. There's still a little tightness in some areas, but I think we're in a good place. And tomorrow, hopefully I can button this thing up for, for the final time. Welcome to another day of rebuilding a sport bike that's been wrecked. I'm your host, Brandon, a guy that has no idea what he's doing. But today, we're going to finish this freaking bike. I went ahead and already took the air duct off of the fairing, which I previously put together. Because I thought that's what I needed to do. So all of this to go in here. This air duct has to go in its rightful place. Signal light. We've got this T25 down here. Putting this one in allows you to kind of allow this thing to not completely fall over. Gives you a little bit of room to kind of move the thing around. This is kind of how I did the other side. And so now I have the signal light holding it and I have that T25 down there holding it. So it gives me room to kind of mess around with this now. What I was struggling on, on the other side, this little lip has to go under this lip. It has to go in between this lip and this lip and go up under this lip. And that's what I had to kind of figure out last night. And once you do that, all of it kind of just lines up naturally. Still a challenge. You still gotta force some stuff into place, but, um, now it's starting to 
kind of go in its place. When you're pulling this stuff off, you don't really understand that. Let's see. Let's see, now that piece at the top is lining up. And now I just gotta kind of clip this stuff in right here. None of these holes here are lining up. Given the struggle that I've had with these fairings, I do wonder if I would have had as much problem with this, even though the headlight bracket was bent, if these were OEM fairings. And that's kind of the challenge you have to kind of go with, with uh, non-OEM stuff. Um, but like I said, the headlight bracket was bent. But even then though, the OEM fairings didn't really give me a challenge of, uh, you know, coming off. So I don't really know the answer. All I know is, you know, we got it on here. And now I gotta move to the lower piece, which in theory, this stuff should in theory be easier, even though, you know, these are kind of wonky. The bottom of this, you know, should line up with everything down here pretty easily. But we are dealing with eBay special. Hopefully my life doesn't take a turn for the worse today. So now I gotta put this piece on. This piece did not, this piece came with the bike, but this whole, rear end right here was just chopped off. So this has to slot in to this. Somehow. Um. You know, one thing, one mistake I made was not looking at I think, where is my other one? Where is it? Where are you? Oh, there we go. Actually, surprised that didn't work. That wasn't even supposed to go in there, but it worked. This is a torch bit in the Allen key. All right, that's locked in. Man, like I said, the fitment on this stuff is so freaking tight. Um, it's not impossible, but it's like you have to like pull it this way, you know, pull this this way, you know, again, the headlight bracket was off up here, but it's like everything is having to be pulled, but this, you shouldn't have to pull this though, but you know, this is, this is just the fitment of these parts, man. All right, we're moving to the lower side. I got to take this off. I don't want to take this off, but I have to because at the other side, this goes through here and it has to hook in from the bottom. I had to come to the other side because I can't see where to hook it in at. This is challenging. Welcome to the inside of the fairings of CBR. You see that little spot right there? That is what I was trying to hook in. And also there at the top is where it screws in. So if you didn't get that hooked in, it wasn't gonna work and you were gonna break it. And also these are the holes lines. Oh, they came out. Crap, where are they? There they are. I gotta put those through that little hole. All right, so. I'll let that in there. I gotta try to get stuff lined up meaning forcing it in place. stock mirrors because these are perfectly fine. Doesn't sound good. I think one of 
switch popped out somewhere. All right, before we move forward, I got to give a quick shout out to my folks that support me over on Patreon. We've built this little community within this big community. And being that we ain't sponsored over here, we got to pay some of these bills somehow, right? But each individual person gets a nameplate on my wall. I've been building this thing out. If you're into that, I will leave a link down in the description. Let's get back to the video. I finally have more energy now. <laughs> it start, I dipped a little bit, man, because it was starting to get sad. <laughs> but we got the bike put together, man. We finally got it put back together. Everything's on. I did have to go back and mess with the front fender because I did not put the bushings in. And I also did not have the brackets to mount the brake line. So I took the uh, I took a drill, drilled out the, those rivets on the stock fender, and then I put the bushings in. Everything mounts up perfectly. These eBay fairings, man, compared to the OEMs, they're not perfect, but they got the job done. The headlight bracket, it was off. Freaking thing was on a two-step. <laughs> Bent that back in place, got it straight. Everything looks good. And I went back and cleaned up the cleaned up the bike a little bit. I did have two fairing pieces that were left over because I'm not using the passenger back seat. I have a cover. So if you had a passenger back seat, those pieces would mount to that to add another flare to it. So whatever I decided to do with the bike, those pieces will follow it. Next up is getting this bike inspected. I've already filed for my inspection, so hopefully this will take place in a couple of days. Also, there's a weird issue with that mirror now that I think about it. I'll deal with that at another time, but either way, we have what we need to get this bike inspected and of course, get it back on the street legally. That is what the goal is for this bike. Of course, first up is getting it, making sure it's safe, which I know the bike is safe to ride. So good news for you is you don't have to wait for all that to happen. Click right here. You can check out the next episode in this. But as always, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I hope if you learn anything from this video, or I guess of what not to do, is that rebuilding wreck bikes, it does not always go easy. There's always some hidden stuff going on. Sometimes you get those quick ones. But sometimes like this, you get some challenges. But yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.